Hello people, I'm the Real Comic Book Gamer, and today I'm going to be talking about Mark Millar's run on Spider-Man. Uh, now, as always with these types of videos, my, I'm not going to be covering every single thing that happens in the book. My goal is not to do that. What my goal is, is to tell you guys a lot of the interesting stuff that happens and get you to read the book on your own, because it's definitely worth it. And, uh, yeah, so let's get into it. This book opens up with Spider-Man beating up Green Goblin and throwing him in jail. They, got, they have a big fight in the city, he throws him in jail, and, yeah. So, then we see that Peter gets a call saying that someone vandalized Uncle Ben's grave. And Peter's like, okay, th this is weird, why would someone do this? And the guy that, uh, that called him said, this happens all the time, you know, it's New York, just a bunch of stupid people. They do stuff like this all the time. I tried to get a hold of your aunt, but she didn't answer. And Peter's like, uh, yeah, she, that's probably her call now someone's calling Peter he answers the phone and it's this guy that tells him that he's got his aunt May and he's like what someone someone kidnapped my aunt May so he runs over to see if it's real or not he runs over to aunt May's place and he sees that she has actually been kidnapped has actually been kidnapped it's not a fake it's not a prank or anything like that Spider-Man then pays a visit to Osborne while he's in prison to ask him if he's the one who kidnapped Aunt May because that is one of the few villains of Spider-Man that actually knows his secret identity. Uh, Osborne doesn't really give him a clear answer. He tells him like he basically tells him he did it. And then after that, he's like, or I could just be, or I could just be lying, you know, taking advantage of a kid who's in a weak position. Also, the, when I say kid, this is adult Peter Parker. This is him. He's got a job now. He's a teacher. This isn't taking pictures for the Bugle Parker. Um, this is a grown-up. Peter Parker. Anyways, Spider-Man then goes to the Avengers Mansion because he figures, you know, uh, normal people, they go to the cops when they're in trouble like this. Where does the su superhero go? He goes to a gang of superheroes. So, goes to the Avengers Mansion. He's just like, hey, can someone help me? And they're just like, no way, that's Spider-Man or anything. We don't care. You know how many people the Avengers Mansion must have coming up to them being like, hey, let me in. I'm a fellow superhero. And so, uh, Spider-Man ends up breaking in there because he wants to get in contact with Nick Fury since Nick Fury is someone who already knows his secret identity, can help, and has, has a bunch of resources sources, breaks in there, um, fights a lot of the security in there, ends up fighting Hawkeye, uh, until a bunch of Avengers show up, and, uh, he, they're like, okay, it actually is Spider-Man, and Spider-Man's like, where's Nick Fury, and they say, well, Nick's in a parallel universe for, well, a parallel reality for the next seven days, and, but the Avengers offer to help him anyways, they're like, you know, even though Nick's gone, we can still help you, and, uh, that Peter declines because he doesn't want to tell them his secret identity, because what got him in trouble in the first place was a secret identity, that's why they kidnapped Aunt May. So he declines their offer to help him. Um, Spider-Man goes, he gets a, uh, he gets in contact with some people. They tell him, hey, Spider-Man, it seems like Electro and the Vulture are the ones who kidnapped Aunt May. So uh, he goes and he tries to find out if they're the ones who did it. He goes, he fights Electro and the Vulture. Turns out they aren't the ones who kidnapped him. His information was wrong. And uh, yeah, that was just... Not too great for Parker, because he ends up getting the crap beaten out of him by Electro. This Electro has been souped up, and probably my favorite version of Electro I've seen in the comics, like, I really like this Electro, he just, he gets to, like, he really messes Peter up, which I thought was pretty cool for Electro, who's not generally a villain that's the greatest in terms of, like, uh, the power he brings, so I thought that was really cool that Mark Millar made him a really substantial villain in this well, as substantial as in he can definitely take on Peter Parker instead of before where he's normally a villain that just gets his butt beat and that's what then that's that. But anyways, during all this chaos, uh, the Bugle puts out a reward for anyone who can unmask Spider-Man. This causes a bunch of craziness to happen for Spider-Man because he's like, the police show up and they try to go after Spider-Man because Spider-Man stops a guy and the police show up and they try to unmask him because it's a huge reward. Everyone's going after him. So this just makes everything even more chaotic for Spider-Man. And uh, then Peter gets the idea of uh, revealing who Spider-Man really is to J. Jonah, except he sets it up to where it looks like John, J. Jonah Jameson's son, is really Spider-Man, so that way he'll cancel the reward and everything and stop this contest that's going on and not publish anything about it. He shows him proof that, well, proof, that uh, John is Spider-Man and J. Jonah Jameson buys it, and he's just like, yeah, we're, we're done slandering Spider-Man and we're done with this contest, no more of that. The man on the phone from earlier, that mysterious guy, he calls Peter again and tells him to meet him tomorrow. So Peter does, and it turns out the guy on the phone was Scorpion. And Scorpion tells Peter that Aunt May is still alive, because Peter had, uh, during all this, Peter had gone to the X-Men. He went to a mutant who had the power to see the future, and she said that it seemed like Aunt May was dead. And so that's why he was really worried about whether she was alive or not. Scorpion says, yeah, she's fine. 
Scorpion tells Spider-Man that Spider-Man, I mean, not that spider that Osborn is behind Aunt May's kidnapping, which now has been confirmed, because before it was sort of iffy on whether he was the one who did it or not. Peter wasn't 100% sure, because before Spider-Man, Osborn had sort of had a gentleman's agreement with all that, instead of Osborn being like, hey, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, um, so he wasn't quite sure if he was the one who did it or not. So yes, Osborn was the one behind Aunt May's kidnapping, and uh, Scorpion tells Osborn no, tells Peter that Osborn had this plan all along. That Spider-Man ever threw him in jail, he was going to kidnap Aunt May. He had this contingency plan the whole time. I really like that, seeing how smart Norman Osborn truly is that he had this plan in place. If he ever got thrown in jail, I really like that. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, Scorpion also tells Peter that Osborn is now vulnerable since he's in jail, and the government wants him dead. Now the reason the government wants him dead is because. Uh, the government, well, back in the olden days of superheroes, when superheroes first showed up and everything, um, they were a big pain in the butt for the rich folk in uh, the government. So what happened was the government ended up like hiring different people to sort of contract superheroes out to certain villains. Because Scorpion's like, no, I just think it's funny that certain villains only go after one hero. And uh, he said, you know, back in the day, this is how it was done. And and Osborn was the, like the government's favorite supervillain contractor until he went crazy and started riding around on the glider he created and everything. Um, but then Bush and Clinton found out about all this. They shut it all down. Um, they tied basically all their loose ends except for Osborn. Osborn's like the only guy, uh, well, one of the few people that still knows about like where all the bodies are buried and all this stuff. He knows things that he shouldn't from when all this stuff was going on, all the shady stuff that the government did. So they want him dead. And word is that Doc Ock has been brainwashed to kill Osborn. So, Osborn being in prison, he's really worried that Assassin's gonna come and kill him because of all the things he knows that he shouldn't. And so, Scorpion says uh, that Aunt May is going to die unless Peter breaks Osborn out of prison. So, of course, Peter accepts because he has no other choice, doesn't want his Aunt May to die. Uh, so, Spider-Man teams up with Black Cat to break Osborn out of prison because, of course, uh, this is Black Cat's specialty, breaking into places. So, they break him out, but as soon as they get outside the prison, a bunch of supervillains uh, Osborn has hired are waiting for them outside. So, there's uh, just a ton of Spider-Man villains. You see, like, Sandman, Electro, guys like that. They're all there, and, uh, it's just, and Osborn ends up flying away in his Green Goblin glider while uh, Peter... Well, Spider-Man and Black Cat have to take on these villains. Uh, it's too, There's too many of them. They're getting the crap kicked out of them. And then the Avengers show up and say them. Peter is confused as to how the Avengers knew where he was, though, because he never told them or asked for help or anything. But then we see that uh, MJ was the one who called the Avengers because she did not like him going to go and break out Osborn. She didn't think it was right or anything. She didn't, yeah, she just didn't trust Osborn, and she was right. So the Avengers come, they save him, and uh, then Spider-Man goes, and he sees that Green Goblin is on a bridge trying to recreate what happened with Gwen with MJ, because it turns out that Green Goblin has captured MJ. So we get a big fight on the bridge, but Doc Ock comes and sort of interrupts that fight, because, you know, he's been he actually has been brainwashed to kill Green Goblin. They start fighting. MJ falls off the bridge. And uh, Spider-Man, we get this really cool moment inside Spider-Man, inside of Spider-Man's mind, where he's like, "Okay, you've been dreaming of this day, while well, having nightmares of the day ever since Gwen died. Of how would I have done it differently if it happened again? How would I save her, you know, without snapping her neck?" So he does all this stuff. He puts the uh, webs on more than one point to save her. Uh, like he attaches it to her feet and her arms and her back and everything, to so that way when uh, when the stop happens she doesn't get whiplash and, like, get completely killed. Like, last time, her neck doesn't snap, like what happened with Gwen. So he ends up saving MJ, and uh, Green Goblin and Doc Ock are fighting. They get hit by lightning, they fall off the bridge and into the water, and that's that. You know, supervillain disappeared, oh, no, that stuff happens. Um, Peter figures out where uh, Aunt May is buried. Turns out she's buried in Uncle Ben's grave plot, and that's basically the end of the book. We get some words between Peter and Aunt May, because Peter's like, if this is endangering, you know, my family, maybe I shouldn't be Spider-Man. Aunt May is just like, shut up, you idiot, be Spider-Man. And that's basically where the book ends. Overall, I really did love this book. Uh, it's great. Uh, Mark Millar, he did a great job at writing Spider-Man. He proves why he's one of the best writers there is out there. Definitely recommend you guys check this out. 
And yeah, I really did like seeing the uh, Green Goblin in this book. This is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, uh, story arc involving Green Goblin. I like seeing how smart Osborn was and how he really despised being thrown in prison and things like that. And the fact that they had this sort of background story of the government used to contract supervillains to different superheroes to keep them busy and things like that. I really like stuff like that, especially the part where we see Peter save MJ and he's like, I've been dreaming of this my entire life, you know, getting to recreate while well, getting to save Gwen and so he knew he had experience this time and I like that uh, but yeah definitely go check out this book you guys it's called like I think it's called like the ultimate spider-man collection or something yeah it's called uh spider-man but Mark Millar the ultimate collection definitely go check it out um anyways uh, uh yeah these these types of videos I love doing them I've done Batman by Frank Miller and I did Batman by Grant Moore well Batman and Robin by Grant Morrison now spider-man by Mark Millar don't know what character I'll do next we shall see but, uh, yeah, these are just, this is, the, how I do these videos is I just go back and pick a book, well, books from my collection and read them again and then do a video on them. And that's what I did this time. So I hope you guys enjoy it. If you did, please let me know with a like and a comment. And I'll see you guys in the next one.